Hello everybody, it's Thea and welcome back to Garden Goddess Tarot and today I've got a fun video. Um, I've been talking for ages about going through all of my black and white decks. I've learned that over the years a type of tarot deck and oracle as well that I am just invariably drawn to are black and white decks and it seems as though I've accrued quite Quite a, a happy little collection of them. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go through them and we're gonna talk about them a little bit today. Because <laughs> why not? It's fun, it's easy, it's been a while since I've done something themed and I thought also it was just the spring equinox, you know, equal amounts light and dark. It seemed a little bit too perfect to do it now. So, so we're rolling with it. So let's, let's chug right on in. Let's, in no particular order, we're just gonna have a look at black and white decks. And I'm gonna give you my little little brain thoughts about them. <laughs> the funny thing about black and white decks, especially when you're kind of coming at at tarot with with the wonderful perspective of non-duality, um, black and white decks really kind of take you a step back into that kind of kind of dual nature of. Um, of, of life <laughs> and I find I'm always kind of like waffling between the two dual non-dual dual non-dual non and kind of a spinning around the middle path kind of thing anyway it's all it's all part of part of the way things are going but uh, but there are times when really I, I feel like a black and white deck is what I need again it's it's less stimulating although they can be quite detailed such as this one so anyway that was just a little bit of my thought pattern about it they do also tend to be a little bit more darker thematically than colorful decks also. That's not to say like a lot of dark and spooky decks can have color, but generally they they tend to have a have a bit of a gothic sensibility about a lot of them and uh, that kind of sings to that part of my heart. So, who knows? That could be a reason why also, but Anywho, let's, we're starting off strong with the Hermetic Tarot based on the esoteric workings of the Secret Order of the Golden Dawn by Jeffrey Dawson. Um, a classic. I think this one's still in order because I was using it for the deck and walk and do occasionally refer to it, but honestly it is just a beautiful reader as well. Black and white, super detailed. Um, hermetic titles on the bottom, all of the um, astrological and uh, Hebrew references are on there, and it's just... This is a... Let's, let's go in. Let's have a look. You'll want to be able to see. It's just a, it's just a stunning deck. This one. So super practical. Wouldn't be without. This is a, a total classic. I'll go through some more. Oh, what's on you? It's out for a while. Um, Strength has got some junk on her. What is that? Who knows? The Last Judgment. The Spirit of the Primal Fire. Shin. Yes. Anyway, there's so much to look at these cards, and this is this is probably one of the earlier black and white decks that managed to, to squirrel its way into my hands, and it just yeah, it helped it helped unlock a lot of things um, for me through you know Golden Dawn Tarot. So it's a joy. So that's one of them, the Hermetic Tarot. A beauty and a classic and a black and white deck. It's also in this cute little peggy bag, by the way, which I don't need to mention, as everybody knows. <laughs> Peggy's bags, they're infamous at this point. Fantastic. Alrighty, who are we gonna do next? Let's do, seeing as this one's just in my hands like constantly lately, this is the inversion tarot. And this is a, um, pseudo Marseille. It's a kind of a replication, modern interpretation of the Roland Nordic tarot. Um, it's got kind of its own interesting style, um, but it, uh, it reads super well. Again, super clear. I find with black and white decks, the clarity about them, I don't know if it's something about being black and white or just it's a me thing, but they're just, they're really clear. They're great for clarifying. Oh, my star's upside down there. And they're just, they're to the point and they, they match everything. That's the other thing. If you're a kind of person who likes an aesthetic match, you could match a black and white deck to any other deck and it won't clash. Like that's the joy of it as well. So they're really um, versatile that way. So we got some 
universal veneer. Interesting. It happens. Yeah, so you'll notice the pips in this one, which I've, I've mentioned a few times recently. The pips in this aren't traditional Marseille style pips, but they're um, in the style of the uh, the Rolo Nordic tarot as well. So I just read them as pips, and again, easy peasy. And being a black and white clear Marseille, it's just it's really it's clear and to the point. The message is what the message is. There's no there's no waffle, and it comes out right away. So I enjoy that one deeply we're gonna motor because there's quite a few here we'll just we'll just go down the line just go down the line the next one's the bianco nero tarot by marco prieto and this is a gorgeous u.s games deck in the style of rider Waite smith a little tuck box a little book gorgeous backs super reversible and it's kind of got that little like wood cutty style that uh that I enjoy, that kind of is usually embraced by um, Marseille style decks, but it does, it's it's more of a, an inkier, textured, linear sort of thing. Like you can see the kind of woodcutty elements of here, which will come up in another deck also, which we'll, we'll see as, uh, as time goes on, but. Ah, there's a lot of detail, a lot of expression, a lot of character. I just think it's beautiful. I think it's simple, straightforward, kind of a, a classic, a classic look to it. Anybody who knows RWS can pick this up and read it right away. Oh, that's a gorgeous world card. I'm into it. You know, super fun, easy reader. Oh, look at it. Look at it. I love that major ones. So good. What's going on here? Are these all swooped around? I'm just chaos with how I keep my decks, apparently. But that's fine. Oh, lovely. Anyway, this is a good one. Gorgeous RWS clone, bit body beautiful, but you know how it is. Anyway, this is just a great easy reader, black and white, a fave. The Bianco Nero tarot. <laughs> the next little friend is the Gustav Dore tarot, and this one is based on the beautiful detailed art of Gustav Dore. It's a lovely Los Carabeo deck. Tuck box, gorgeous back. Oh, ideal. Need to use this guy more. Um, very uh, Christian myth, shall we say? Themed, themed deck. This one, but emotive. Again, it's kind of that retrofit art kind of kind of vibe that a lot of the, the Los Carabeo decks um, do, which I love. They're my favorite. I love kind of making my personal interpretations of the tarot, um, seeing how they meet up with the image presented in this case. And they're, they always do a really good job. This one is a great, another woodcutty style in a more detailed kind of way. What's, there's a word for that kind of printing. I'm not sure, not, I'm no art expert, but Super evocative, great for when you need it. Pairs with a lot of great decks as well. And this one is black and white. It's like black and sepia. It's got a little bit more of like a like a warmth to the white part of it, but it's still it's it's still firmly within the the category for me of, of black and white, monochromatic or duochromatic because <laughs> there's white and black. This one's good, gorgeous. And if you're the kind of person who likes this kind of deck, I would highly recommend uh, 
this one. The little guidebook meetings are pretty good too. <laughs> Where you have the fun is the adventure that the image takes you on, so. Fun little guy. Angelic imagery. Got some modus and Moses business over here. Is the magician? Is that him? Yeah. Somebody with a tablet. And there's a lot for me to learn here, for sure. So. Oh, this was a really, this was one of the, actually, it's the, is it the box? Yeah, oh, it's different. Same kind of energy though. Judgment card there. Fun. Alrighty. Gustav Dore Tarot. That one's fun. And a black and white deck. Alright, let's keep on chugging. In the same kind of woodcutty vein. Let's stick to let's stick to that theme. <laughs> we got the Super Oracle. And again, kind of in the more sepia toned. I've tried mixing this with other black and white decks, and it doesn't like super go because the background isn't white per se it's definitely more of a cream sepia situation um but this is this is a classic this is one of the first oracle decks that i ever really bonded with amazing keywords there's a little book guidebook if you want to expand that you get it separately purchase extra I, I think you really don't need it with this one um it's got kind of a Jungian uh, psychoanalytic theme to it it's very fluid and it has a ton of movement within it. The texture and the detail of the cards. I don't know, it's, it's immersive. It lets your brain kind of go fun places. And it feels kind of older than it is too. Entirely. Oh, and I, and I love a nothing card. Always will. If there's an Oracle deck that has a nothing card in it. Yes. So good. We got Anima and Animus. It's a few weird shapes with colors in them that you can go your own weird way with and the elements as well. Deus Ex Machina, mysticism. So you see, it's a, it's a fun time. And it's great for a more, more spiritual reading. As a, like you can use it uh, as, as kind of the day-to-day the -day as well. And they make a good pair. So like we've got, we pulled two. We've got self and intuition there and then like reawaken that tells a pretty distinct story. So it's a, it's a great little little one. For readings. That's a super oracle by Usi. Same guys that did uh, the Eros Garden of Love Tarot and the Pagan Otherworlds as well. And one of my fave little black and white boys. Oh, another oracle deck. There's quite a few oracle decks actually. <laughs> I'm not gonna try and over <laughs> over analyze. We're just we're just looking, we're experiencing, we're having fun. And if you like black and white decks, then this is kind of a a fun way to learn more about something you may have not known about. This is the Poesis Oracle, and this one is by Andrea Wan. And what potential stirs in your depths? I am a sucker for poetry. I'm, I've always known this, but especially in the last three or four months, it has become abundantly clear that it is an essential part of what I'm doing here with card work in general. Um, and I say this because this Oracle beautiful black and white jobby on the more modern side very simplistic so you'll notice not too many um tarot decks or oracle decks i even own kind of sit in this space but it it stands out because each of the cards has its own poem that was written um by megan king so it, you've got to look it up though it's online it's not within the little book it does give you some some spreads and that sort of thing but <gasps> cute i'm gonna burn it down but um yeah so you could look up the poem and it, uh, it adds that extra little depth of layer to, to your reading. But the gorgeous thing about this one is it's, it's very simplistic. The keywords are great, um, but you've got some that are black and some that are white. So it's, you, can, you can definitely feel the lighter or darker side of, of the message. And oh, it's just a fun little one. Lots of variety. I'm a little bit papery cardstock. It's not too flexible either, but that's okay. But I 
really like this one. A lot. There's the birth card there. So you got like your basic oracle and keywords, but also some that are a little bit more, um, I don't know, zazzy. Got some chaos. Union. Open. Practice. Love. I do like that image. That's super cool. Express. Which I like. It means two things. <laughs> I think it's it's getting at one of the things in the image, but the other thing is like fast. <laughs> Things are gonna happen fast. What's going to happen fast? Recharge, change, abundance. So yeah, it's it's a good one. So I think that's still available. Who knows? I got it ages ago. Hard to know. Couldn't say. But that's the Poesis Oracle, and if you are a poetry lover, check it out. Let's do a tarot. Another gorgeous black and white deck, which I love deeply, is the Black Tarot by Victoria Iva. Uh, this is uh, published by Debrig, Debray. Um, and it is so good. It's indie quality. I'm pretty, I don't know, would we consider this mass market? It's available on Amazon and it's relatively well priced. but it's good. It's one that's dark and spooky. It's emotive. It's spicy. I love where it takes my brain when I do readings with it. Great to do at night. However, might be kind of difficult to see as I'm sure you can tell. Very, oh, I love it. I don't know. I don't even know what you call this aesthetic, but I love it or the style or this I don't know. Oh, this Empress. Look at it. Look at the little little alien ghost fetus in there. Oh, I love it. There's the magician. Yeah, they're kind of even harder to see in real life than on, on the camera, which is interesting. There's like Ace of Wands. Like it's 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 minimal but it's impactful. It tells it's exactly what 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 that kind of energy feels like. Two of Cups. Like look look at that. It's, oh, this is a good one. Amazing. And this one, yeah, a heavy hitter in the in the black and white deck category for sure. Six of Wands. Ace of Swords. Ace of God, oh, we're getting all the aces all of a sudden. King of Pents. Ooh. Sometimes you gotta look a little bit. You gotta feel it. It's one of those ones that's really evocative. It makes like it it hits that feeling point. Not a lot of thinking with this one. It's more of a, um, it's watery for sure, but like a dark water, an underground river. Major source. Oh, look at it. He's hot. That's my type. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. I love the seven of wands too. This is really good. Yes, absolutely. An interesting take on the Hierophant as well. Two of Pents, very good also. Yeah, no, this is, this is a winner. The Tower. Yeah, all these, these cards have a lot in them. Ah. <laughs> they give me giggle, I love it. Sorry, it'll shake the table, but so good. Look at that Justice with our little, little black and whites. And then this like eye, this all seeing eye. Again with stuff on it. Oh, that's weird. Um, <laughs> and then the tear of truth. Oh, there's little hands. Ooh. The lovers. Three of cups. Emperor. Anyway, you get the, you get the idea. So this is a good one. Oh, Judgment's really good too. Yeah. I'm trying to stop banging my candle. But. We'll just go oh, hanged man. Six of Cups. Oh, with the with the little the little bubble in the in the middle, it's perfect. So perfect. Eight of Wands is also very good. Five of Pence. 
Nine of Grass, so Spheres. Page of Wands, also a very good one. I love this with this little heart on fire. Yes, what a one to end on. Wow, okay. Love the Page of Wands. So anyway, that's the Black Tarot. I really thoroughly enjoy it. Victoria Iva. All right, next on the list, another amazing mass market black and white deck. This is Murder of Crows. The Murder of Crows, actually, it's funny that this one, this one's kind of shown up for me just in the last little while as spring has come back. With spring coming back, so do the crows. And they're always like the first birds that are just kind of around. They're lining the sides of the road in groups of twos and threes lately. Just kind of everywhere, hanging out, doing their thing. And I love them. And this deck is just, I don't know, it's it kind of, it, it, it came out at the same time. And I've been using it for a couple of readings lately. And it's weird, it's spring, but it's like, no, it's murder of crows time. <laughs> So this is by Corrado Roy, it's Los Garbeo deck, um, and it's a gorgeous black and white one. There was a special edition that had a lot of red embellishments on it as well, but I think being the black and white purist that I am, I really just like it the way it is. I think it's stunning. And the, the little write-ups in the guidebook on this one are, are a, a more integral part of the story than perhaps some of the other decks on this list so far as well. That. They're really, they're really unique and make this deck uh, a really unique experience as well. But yeah, it's on the spookier side. Really leans on that crow energy. A bit spooky and mysterious, a bit shadowy. And I love it. So as a, as a surprise around Astara, who knew an Astara deck is the murder of crows tarot. Even the sun card, look at it. Ooh, such a mood. I just, ah. This reminds me of like the oppressive sunshine of late winter. I still have snow. If I would, I would spin you around so you could see out the window as well. It, it snowed another couple inches last night and it's just the way the sun shines off it is like, it's oppressive. It hurts my eyes, it's too much. And this card reminds me of that a little bit. Well, that world card cutie yeah so murder of crows by corrado roy it's a pretty sweet black and white deck and one i've been giving a go this uh spring season <laughs> another one by corrado roy which after that was that was the one i got first uh then i realized this was being released by him them Los Garabeo also. Um, I jumped I jumped at the opportunity because it is a Rhetorite Smith deck, which I'm always and forever infatuated with, but it's black and white. But, and it's done by, um, illustrated by Corrado Roy. So you've got the, the moody inkiness of his artwork. I will say this one feels a little bit more rushed. There's like just in, in, the, um, in the quality of the art, you can still see a lot of the pencil lines underneath the ink, but again, I find it kind of charming, but it, it's not the same level of like immaculateness as this one. So I think if you're if you're choosing between the two and you're kind of unsure, if you're not super hung up on having a Rider Waite Smith kind of clone, then I would go with Murder of Crows. Like just it's objectively better, but I probably use this one more. I used to have gray borders on it, which I chopped off to make it smaller. So I did not edge, might not edge because I don't know, when, when decks do the multiple colors on the back, it's not so bad. But anyway, um, this one's great. I really like it. It's, uh, I know, dark and moody, but our familiar Rider Waite Smith images in the style of Corroderoy, black and white, great for clarifying, just good to whip out for readings. I really like this one. This one feels very much like a, like a me deck as well. And it lives in this adorable little Krista bag, by the way. Isn't that great? Oof. Perfect, matches, amazing. That's Krista from uh, Crochet Witch Tarot. But. 
Yeah, very familiar, but it just it, it takes the tone of, of Rider Waite Smith and just and, and calibrates it a little bit to a little bit more of the the darky depths of, of things. Um, the guidebook that came with this as well, it doesn't come in a little tuck box, it's got a pretty hefty box that it comes in. Um, and there was a pretty big guidebook within it. That was written by Barbara Moore as well. So if you um, want a little bit more of a darker take on the meaning of, you know, your standard tarot cards, I believe that book kind of takes that that route while still being Barbara Moore's kind of gentle gentle writing as well. Um, it's it's all right, it's good. I don't really use it though because I tend to read Rider Waite Smith the way I read it. So I don't refer to it too often when using this because it is so easy to read, but it's 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 there if you need it, should should say, but yeah. So cute. All of our little RWSE friends. But just like a little bit more somber, a little more subdued, melancholy. The spookiest magician you ever did see. <gasps> Still fun though. <laughs> oh, doggies. Yeah, so I can eat to see here. If we, if we look in really close, um, there's a little bit like around the R and the A and the letters and stuff. So you've got the, you've got the pencil drawings kind of underneath there still. Can you see? I'm not sure. Anyway, just to kind of point out the, it, it you can tell it's hand drawn then, you know, it, it, the essence of the creator is still all over it. Fun little guy. So that is the Dark Side Tarot by Corrado Roy, guidebook by Barbara Moore. Oops, do my little bow. Hey, soup. Perfect. Okay, let's let's chug on into the next guy. Um, let's do this one. I think yeah. This is the Light and Shadow Tarot. An older one. I'll check the book for its uh, release date unless it's on the outside. No. And this one's really quite cool. I don't see this around the block as often. Um, she's she's a big one. <laughs> also, it's not a it's not a small deck by any means. Um, and it was made in 1997 or 1961. That was when he was born, 1997. Yeah, that makes more sense. So yeah, that's when it uh, first became about. Here's the bags, very gorgeous. Um, this is really neat though, because it's very tarot-y. We've got our astrological associations and the decans on all the cards. And it's um, it's kind of thoughty as well in some cards. It's really it's really fun. And it's got that woodcutty style again. I think I really like that. I think I'm, I'm gathering that based on a lot of the choices <laughs> of decks that I like, this kind of, clear woodcutty style of things is uh, is something I like. So very, a little little thin, but you want it to be thin if it's gonna be big so you can shuffle it. But we got princesses instead of pages. And then we got Libra, so Saturn and Libra here for our three of swords. Kings are on horses, so it's very knighty if, if you're thinking Thoth, Thoth knights. Pisces, Eight of Cups, The Lovers. It's definitely got its own distinct style. I like it though. Sometimes it's a lot. Kind of, you gotta take a second and sit with the card and like look at it and soak it in a little bit because there is kind of a lot going on here. Like, look at this magician. Little fishies. There's Sword, Wand, Cup, or Pentacle Cup. Elements around the outside. Lemniscuit. Hexagram. So much on there. Oh look, he's pulling fish out of fish. His feet are fish. Ah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this is a good one. Definitely has its own, own little style. And I would say is fundamentally a good, a good deck. I have no complaints. Look at this, with the little, our guys, our fixed signs. And then there's the, the turtle with a fetus in it. And it's like, a, and then we've got our, ooh, 
and then whoosh yeah I like this I like this a lot hermit is gorgeous it's really it's hard to mess up a hermit card there's even a little snail with like a buddha on his head little yin yang in the flame of the hermit like oh so much to think about so much to jump off of so many places to go in a reading with this one Tackles. There's a fool, so yeah, there's a crocodile and the monkey. Butterfly. There's a platonic solid as well. Isocahedron, I think. <laughs> Eight of Wands. Ooh. Little rainbow is a nice touch there, too. <sighs> Anywho, well, I should go through this faster. <laughs> Look at all the cards. I'm sure there's a walkthrough somewhere if you wanted to see more, but as black and white decks go, I like it a lot. It's really good. Right up my alley. Yeah, like very prudence, right? Sunny Virgo. With like little extras, you know? Judgment. But like, I wouldn't say it's a clone in any way because it definitely goes its own way on a lot of things, but it's just, it's really heavily inspired by them, both Rider Waite Smith and Thoth, so it's, it's good. So nice. And oh, what a, what a place to end. The moon, amazing. So that is the, the Light and Shadow Tarot. A great black and white deck, for sure. Let's do a couple of Oracle decks before we get into my like pseudo honorable mentions. I've got the Talisman Oracle, which I used recently for a few readings for folks. And it's kind of fun. So this one, um, US GameStack came out last year. It doesn't have the most cards ever, I think it's 44, um, but it comes with this little pack of um, little vellum papers that you can use to trace the uh, sigils that are present on the cards if you wanted to use them and then like slip them in your shoe or something, you know, or put them in your wallet or do do whatever it is one would like to do with, um, with their sigils. Oops, let's put that somewhere where you can see what I'm talking about. Boop, boop. Um, so here it is. It's um, in the way of the kind of modern US Games Oracle decks where they're they're glossy, um, got gilding. Think think all of Angie Solon's decks, right? Um, but it's not by her, I'm pretty sure. Could you imagine if it was? That'd be funny. Um, Nora Paskaleva. Yeah, deck and guidebook set. And so those are the backs. Let's look at the fronts. Uh, and I guess black and white, it's, it's not really white. It's more of like a like off-white kind of greeny energy. But in my brain, all intents and purposes, is it's black and white. <laughs> but we've got a blessed day, healing energy. So you'll see there's little sigils you can um, incorporate into, into your daily business. Protection. Destiny. Safe travel. It's a very oracle-y oracle deck, you know. I would say overcome fear works well though and and it's been it's been on point when necessary i don't ask, this is an oracle deck i don't ask too much of um i have yet to um, make use personally of of the sigil aspect of it but it's there if i would like it elixir of the life kind of fun but again it's one i don't ask a lot of it does it does its job and and our our relationship will only grow i've had it about about a year now you're in june maybe Wow, lionfish. Fun. But yeah. It's a mood. Very witchy. Am I out of things to say about it? <laughs> I think so. It'll be 
<laughs> ground things backwards there. Passion, courage, concealment, cast away negativity, and learn the truth. So yeah, just a, just a cute little generic oracle with a little fun interactive aspect. There's the book. Yeah, that's the talisman oracle. The other oracle that is black, it's mostly black and white. Again, there's a little, there's a little bit of not black and white in it, but again, in my brain for all intents and purposes, she's a black and white deck. And this is the Magical Botanical Oracle, Plants from the Witch's Garden by Maxine Miller and Chris Panzak. A, uh, a heavyweight in the, in the witchy world, he is, um, again, not the most cards ever, but I think with this one, it's, uh, I don't really use this in a clarifying or definitory kind of way. Um, I, have, I have a weird thing about plant decks and, and to be like thoroughly transparent and 100% honest, this one's kind of on the chopping block for me because I really don't use it all that often. It's not the kind of deck that I like, I'm like, yes, I need to use that for a question that I have. Um, but if I want to add a little extra something something to any of the plant work that I do, this might come in handy, good to look at, fun to use as altar cards and, and who knows but it is stunningly beautiful. It captures the essence of the plants as well as the, like presenting the, the magical information about them in a really digestible way. That's not overly academic or, or too shallow either. It, it kind of really strikes a balance between kind of pandering to the audience as well as overly trusting the audience. It, it's, it's a really, it's really well done in that, in that respect and beautiful, detailed, Thoroughly well produced. How many cards is it? Does it say? Is it 40? 33. Yeah, it's only 33 cards. So yeah, she's not she's not huge. But each of the cards has so much detail and was created with such intention and beauty that I can forgive it that. I kill you here. garden again some of them are the darker black cards some of them are light they're just fun but yeah it's one I don't like to pull more than one one card at a time with if I were to use it as a, as a, a daily oracle draw just as a you know set the tone to the day kind of thing but a, a really well done deck I gotta find I gotta find its place within me I think is the is the trouble with that guy but like fundamentally on paper is pretty incredible. All right, so that, that comes to the, the end of the strictly black and white decks. Here we have some um, honorable mentions that kind of creep a little bit more color in than, uh, than I could truly justify having them as purely black and white decks. So <laughs> we're gonna start with this pair. Um, the Witch's Tarot and its companion Oracle deck, the Three Black Moons Oracle deck by Chris Madsen of Burning Paper Hearts. Let's start with the Tarot deck. The Witch's Tarot. This one is a gorgeous photography deck by a male creator, which really, I think I've found, I've discovered the way that I want to incorporate these specifically um, within how I do things. <laughs> it's a beautiful deck. Where, how are we gonna do do do? Um, female models, photography, really evocative photography, dark and spooky, um, and very black and white. As you can see, there's a little bit of color on the back, but uh, some, some images have more of a color cast than others, which is why I couldn't truly call it a, a true black and white deck, but it's, it's close and, and it kind of, it captures, it's the spirit of a black and white deck, hence why it's getting an honorable mention. But, um, the, the images, you've really got to come at this deck, not with a Rider Waite Smith headspace at all. You've really got to push past that, open your mind to your own personal meanings of what that card means outside of the box of Rider Wright Smith, and then kind of take what you will from the image and apply that to the reading in a way. It's really, it's a really open and creative style to read with it. Um, and I think the, the nature with how, with which how it's been created, um, in a, in a photography setting by someone outside of kind of the community it's 
trying to represent. Um, it really, for me, I think it's going to end up being kind of like a, like a muse related deck. Same with this one. So um, I, I was talking to a friend um, about this one specifically and, and, and the feelings around it. And I really think seeing this deck as opposed to being in a, a, a feminine experience space, think of it more as experiencing this deck from the masculine perspective, whatever whatever masculine, like your own personal, you can be, you can be a female and have a masculine perspective, experiencing this deck from that perspective and using it as a representation of the muse and use it in a creative way that way is going to be kind of the space with which, with which it sits really well for me, I think. Cause yeah, five of, like that's, that's easily five of cups. Three of pentacles. But yeah, feel, feeling this as, as, as muse energy as opposed to embodying the female experience energy really shifts the way one looks at it and I think how useful it's going to be for me um, in, in readings. Because like, it's one I never pulled out too too often because I always felt like it never quite fit what I wanted it to be because I had what I wanted it to be and it wasn't that. So I just kind of, I've, I've decided to try and meet it where it is, see it a bit more clearly and I think I found, I found that spot there with with that oh, iconic as well so that's the the witch's tarot chris madsen there's a few extra bonus um oracle cards thrown in as well which is which is nice oh and uh, there's a couple of pictures of him the druid and the fool are both um self portraits of the art, art um, artist which is which is fine i don't actually mind that too much and if i hated it i could just pull it out but but no it is good it's very evocative very emotive there is there is there's something going on here in these images that's really useful in a in a card reading um, situation perspective area. But I think changing my perspective on it and kind of seeing it in a, in a clear way is, is going to be um, really helpful for me with it. And then I'm also going to show the Three Black Moons shadow deck, which was kind of, again, designed as a shadow work deck, but it's... It's an oracle deck with witchy keywords, um, which again, I'm, I'm really taking at, uh, at face value. Um, and this one even has more color in it. So as black and white decks go, this one has a lot more um, of, a, of a colored experience. It's also gilded in gold, like a matte gold. I like how it looks, but I really wish they had just done, <laughs> they'd done the same as this. They just matched them. That would have been, that would have been ideal for me, but, but hey, that's okay. But okay, so here we have, we have our muse, our muse trio. What do we think? And I'm thinking the more I'm, I'm experiencing this, this cardstock, it feels floppier. There's less of a core in it and it's given me like hay house, but stickier. I don't know, it's weird. I'm not, it's also quite a bit smaller than the tarot. Unless you're like obsessed with it, I wouldn't recommend running out and grabbing it because there's a, there's a lot of other great oracle decks out there that have the same keywords but if you're really into the art style um it's it's good and gorgeous and i really think for me it's gonna work in a kind of inspiration muse kind of energy right So as opposed to an introspective deck, this is an, an extrospective deck. Is that a word? Did I just make up a word? <laughs> Maybe like the, she is the embodiment of the spirit of creativity in this case, who is divinely feminine, but I am seeing it from the outside as opposed to being in that divinely feminine space from which the creativity comes, you know? I'm meeting it at the door instead of being the door. Interesting, that collection of images there. Hands on face. But yeah, you can see we've got a lot more color in this one. So as, as black and white decks go, it's pretty, it's pretty not black and white, but we've got some. Four of Wands gathering an anxiety, yes. 
Yes, indeed. Empathy, ritual, magic, magic, and sight. That says some stuff also. Sword, five of wands, and lantern. Yep. So yeah, it's, that's, that's, those are those ones. So it's a, we're just, we're just showcasing black and white decks here. I don't need to piece it apart too much, but I just, I wanted to give you my thoughts for those curious um, on these decks as well by Chris Madsen, if anyone had, had any questions. <laughs> So those are some honorable mentions in the black and white decks department. Couple more, couple more, couple more. Let's do, this is another Victoria Iva deck. Um, this is the Guiding Light Tarot. It is an honorable, it looks like it's gonna be a gorgeous black and white deck, doesn't it? But she's got some sneaky color in her as well. Um, this is the same creator as did the Black Tarot that we talked about earlier. I'll just leave that there so you can see. Um, here's the backs good start but then you'll notice there's a lot more color in um in these which is fine i like it it's good but um it's very this is a this is a steely cold deck it's very it's it's aggressive and abrasive it's really air really really air whereas the black terror was water this one's really really air um and it reads kind of harshly and coldly and clearly but again, we've got bits of bits more color kind of popping through in this one, so I couldn't truly call it a full-on black and white deck, but it's really neat. It's really cool. That's, that's a nice temperance card. But another shining achievement from <laughs> Victoria Iva as well. I wonder, this says premium color edition. I wonder if there is an edition that's more more black and white. I'll have to do some looking into that. Let me know if anybody else knows more about that. I just know about this one. But yeah, we've got uh, holographic edges, which to be honest, I don't love. <laughs> Could have done without. Um, you know how it is, but. And a nice, like being the guiding light tarot, it is a good contrast to the, the black tarot, but it, this almost feels spookier. Like this feels colder and harsher than even the black tarot, which was really comforting in a dark darkness kind of way. Oh, oh, that is a bitey strength card if I've ever seen one. Whew. Whoops. But, but definitely a good deck. An honorable mention in the black and white decks category. It's very pippy, but it's like, it's, 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 it's zazzy pips. Pips that have got lots kind of going on for him. I don't know if you can see, there is just like a single point of light up there as the star. Wow. <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay. Death's good too. Again, with that, that single point. But being the guiding light tarot, there's the, the inclusion of the way light kind of works in this deck is is powerful. You can see where the, where the points of light kind of shine, so to speak. Oh, ha, ha. The Guiding Light Tarot. Victoria Iva, honorable mention in the black and white deck category. The next one that's an honorable mention is the Reclaim Oracle. It's not really black and white, it's pink and white, or pink and black, sorry, not pink and white. It would have been a whole different deck if it was pink and white. Probably wouldn't have even, <laughs> probably wouldn't have been interested in it if it was. If it was uh, pink and white, but the blackness really sets it off, and this is a this is a great one for for emotional literacy and just you know finding your feels. It's not an emotion wheel in a deck, but so you see, it's kind of like black and white, but it's pink and white. So I couldn't couldn't officially in my in my heart of hearts couldn't couldn't officially call it a black and white deck, but again. Really clear. There's no beating around the bush with this one. It tells you what it's going to tell you. And then you get to decide what to do with that information. And there's, that's a chunky one. There's a ton of cards in this. 88 of them, so. 
there's much opportunity. I do like the little blobby bodies. <laughs> it's just like mine. <laughs> This is by uh, Little Darkness Press. Send her some love from me. <laughs> She's going through some stuff at the mo. But we're all so grateful that she managed to, to create this, this little deck for, for us to incorporate in our lives. A splendid. Oops. Oops. I don't know how the reversals get everywhere. Yeah. That's the Reclaim Oracle. An honorable mention. The next honorable mention, second to last. All of the Leela and Olive decks kind of definitely fit into the um, black and white honorable mention category. Also the Pythia Botanica one and two, and then the Vox Lux Umbra. Is that the new one? I think. Oh, and there's the, the space one. Ad Orbita. <laughs> They're all limited color palette decks. Um, plant. These ones are plant focused, but uh, Kind of that black and sepia again but we do have pops of pops of red and blue kind of on the foliage as they come in so i wanted to to mention this one as a as an honorable mention uh, for a black and white deck but it isn't isn't quite this one's another one where you've really got to take your rider waite smith meetings and kind of leave them at the door and and be open to the little bit of poetry that's in the guidebook as well as the direction your brain takes you it takes the pressure off though like I don't, I don't use too too many of my super esoteric associations with this one. It's gentler. It 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 asks less of me. This deck. <laughs> it is it asking me to kind of let go of, of the preconceived notions I have and just kind of sit with, with the plants. And the energies of that card of the tarot. Kind of in a really grounded way. I'd say this is definitely a, a grounding earthy deck. It's, it's practical. It's less, it's less like heavily spiritual, I guess. Like in any tarot deck is a spiritual tool, you know what I mean? But just like in its, in its groundedness, it doesn't have its head up in the clouds. That's what I mean to say. But yeah, very sim simple, limited color palette. And the, uh, the oracle decks are very similar. The backs are gray. And then we've got a, a plant with a keyword as well. So it, it, they also are included in this <laughs> um, honorable mention section. So let's see, Ophidia Rosa Tarot by Leela and Olive. And her last one that is an honorable mention lives in this little bag. This is the Mountain Dream. And it's the reason I consider this an honorable mention, the bags are purple even, um, as, as a black and white deck is, it would have originally been black and white photography and they've had a wash of color put on them in the um, developing process. So, you know, so like the, got some purple in the majors, the cups are kind of a pinky color. There's our purple moon. The swords kind of have like a gray, dark blue tinge to them. Pentacles are kind of browny. And wands are green, I believe. Your swords again. Yeah, wands have got like a green cast to them. So um, the reason I consider this an honorable mention is because it would have originally been the photos were, were black and white. So it's kind of kind of a black and white deck, but but also not really because it's it's got it's got its own little rainbow of color. But this is an amazing little deck. Um, one, I think the oldest photography deck that was made in the States. All of these were staged images of the creator and her friends. Interesting character for sure. But it's of a time, this one, and it tells a specific story. Like that could have been last week. Interesting looking back through 
your time in that way. He's hot. <laughs> Seven of Pence. And then there's the Eight of Pence. So. so yeah. That is the Mountain Dream Tarot by B. Nettles, I believe is the, the name of the creator on that one. So there we have it. I think that's it, everybody. Those are the collection of black and white decks which as you can see are many because I am hashtag obsessed can't stop won't stop they're amazing I don't know something about them let me know what your your feelings and thoughts are on black and white decks I'm I'm incredibly curious on if you you love them hate them can work with them abhor them like do they give you a pause do you need that diversity of color to really find your messages or do you find comfort and solace in the simplicity of a monochromatic grayscale black and white kind of environment i'm i'm so curious but anywho thanks so much for being here guys i really appreciate it i hope you've enjoyed the super long video check out any extra content in the member space behind the scenes readings for aries season just went up they were great i had a wonderful time Lots of spicy information in there. <laughs> and otherwise, thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I will see all of you fine people in my next video. Bye.